Hello, my little chicken cutlets. Vegan, of course. It's Michelle Visage. Welcome to another episode of What You Packing. And joining me today, all the way from Minnesota, yeah, it's Utica Queen. Oh, gosh. Hi there. Hello. Oh, I could use some casserole. <laughs> Oh, hi, how are ya? I'm doing just peachy. How are you doing, Michelle? Oh, I'm wonderful, Utica. We have so much to talk about. Oh, bring it on. First and foremost, in general, how was your experience on the Drag Race of RuPaul? The Drag Race of RuPaul was everything. <laughs> what an honor. Watching you up there, my mom was a sewing teacher growing up. Really? And she never taught me how to sew, and I always wanted. But when I saw you up on stage, it reminded me of all those McCall's and Butterick patterns. It brought back so many great memories because those are kind of fashion moments that are forgotten, especially in a drag world. I get a full 70s vibe from you. What is it about that time that calls to you? Because you're young. Girl, you're nuts. I am fully wearing 70s pants right now. <laughs> See, there you go. So 70s, cow print. <laughs> I love that you had a mom that sewed like that and like gifted that to you. Let me clarify. My mother taught sewing, and every time I asked her to teach me, would push me away and tell me no, she didn't have the time. Oh no. So I never learned, but I did learn the love of a pattern. So there was a passion for fashion at a very young age. We didn't have a lot of money, so my mother would make all of our clothing. My brother wow. and I would be wearing matching conflicting patterns. <laughs> and that's why I think I have an affinity for a conflicting pattern. When I see a plaid with a floral or a plaid with a polka dot, you know, you'd learn in school, no, no, no. But for me, it's yes, yes, yes. It makes me really happy. Yes. And have you always been kind of a quirky outsider? I am literally a dork at all times. Such an outsider. Which I love. I think we're cut from the same cloth. Two contrasting patterns, but we fit just perfectly together. Oh! Utica, that's so poetic. I'm in cow print and polka dots and you're in leopard print sequins. It's Gorgelina Jolie. I agree. I have been this Bonko Wonkos for a long time. I just embrace it, you know? You have to. I mean, you walked into the workroom with a strawberry on your head. A really good friend of mine made that for me and I was like, I'm just gonna toss this on my head. I love it. I love it too and I think that's what makes Utica Queen, Utica Queen. And the first lip sync you lost to Got Mick, and that must have been difficult. I was an outsider myself and continue to identify as one. I was always kind of the last person picked for things and the one made fun of and things like that. Did it feel that way? There was a moment where I was getting the short end of the stick with the voting portion of it. Mm. It was like, oh, drat. What do I gotta do? <laughs> so cute, drat. <laughs> drat. Your drag tells stories. There's such an edge to that kind of drag that I appreciate. And I really have an affinity for dorks in my heart. And I could tell like <laughs> right away you were, you were one of me. So I loved you from the beginning. And I know you had your moments that were fantastic. I think you struggled with some, like the roast. You were kind of mean in the roast, which was <laughs> shocking. My Minnesota kid being mean. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> my main goals coming into all of this was I want to show them my heart. And I want to show them my kook. And I really want to perform to the best of my ability. You helped a lot of the girls in the ball challenge. Is that correct? Yes. That was one of my favorite top, top moments of the show by far. I feel so comfortable around a sewing machine. My wise teacher once told me, if you can't afford therapy, you can afford to sew. I was like, that's great. I'm never gonna have money, but I do know how to sew. And so this is my form of therapy. <laughs> and to be able to share my joy for sewing with the other girls, that really was something that I'm gonna hold on to for a long time. Does it work for you, Utica? Sewing is therapy? I definitely think so. I will find myself sewing for hours. Lost in thought, being able to like construct a garment I think is definitely something that fuels my soul. Should we talk about your snatch game for a minute? <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> let's go. I loved the way you looked. I loved the ideas of squirrels instead of the Afro. I know it's a sensitive subject because you don't want to tread politically incorrect and you don't want to offend cultural appropriation, but I think that you did something so smart 
by sewing those squirrels together and making a wig out of it. Now, mind you, no Bob Ross in there whatsoever. There was none. But you looked adorable. Thank and talk you. about quirk and kook. I mean, we saw your kook. <laughs> Let's talk a minute about this would have been your finale look. Yes. This one is based off the Cathedral of Notre Dame and the event of it burning. Okay. You can't see the whole thing, but this thing goes all the way to the floor and has big trains. It's crazy. Woof. And the neck is supposed to bring the prayers up to heaven. And I have this big cathedral headpiece that I made. Uh, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's really pointy and pokey and very fragile. And so I couldn't have it here today. But yeah, I wanted to bring a little bit of my religious upbringing into my finale look. But it's not just your upbringing. You still practice. You're an Adventist, aren't you? I do, yes. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. You know, we worship on Saturdays, the Sabbath. Sometimes religion works for the gays and sometimes it doesn't. My family gave me amazing morals and I wanted to hold on to that and like bring it into my art form. I know that you're vegetarian, so that means you've probably been vegetarian your whole life because I know they don't eat meat, correct? So I am actually not vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that an Adventist thing? It is like the Adventist thing. Kosher, vegetarian, <laughs> or vegan. I ended up on a beef and dairy farm, so <laughs> I'm a weird Christian. Is the Adventist church good with gay people? Not at all. Okay, I didn't think so. So it's just your family. I feel like my family is filled with a bunch of special beans. We put ourselves into these boxes of religion and like small town vibes, but somehow we're just like the little daisies that peek out of the cracks. I love that. And I feel very blessed to be with such a goobery family. If you were to do any of the challenges over again, you get a second shot in any of the challenges, would you want to? And if so, which one? I'd probably do the roast again. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those experiences where you're learning while you're doing it. Yes. You were there. I was there. I had one of the best zingers that was off the cuff, and I highly doubt it's going to get in. Which one? Which one? <gasps> oh my goodness. RuPaul, you are such a fashion icon from head to toe. Could you stand up for us, please? <laughs> <laughs> right, you were so wrong. Yes, triumph. I can die happy. So you had a great win with Simone as a team for the makeover challenge. What did that feel like? That moment was definitely one of my favorite moments and I learned so much and really it was inspiring. I was quite concerned with going into that challenge. Right. Trying my best to like be an advocate and be an ally, but is it also appropriate? Is it okay? Over the course of that episode, I learned how to be so strong and I learned how to be fabulous on the stage and be sexy and beautiful. By winning that week, it was a lot of cherries on the top of the cake. It was. It was really magical. Simone is just amazing. To be able to share that with her, it was unreal. Well, it was unreal to watch too. It was fantastic. And you all were just the perfect team at the perfect time and that's the way it worked. Michelle, you're frozen, but let me just say, even when you're frozen, you're gorgeous. Thank you, you're frozen now too. Utica froze too. Let's get this together so we can say goodbye to each other. No, okay, Utica's back. Okay, you're back. You were frozen too, you're like this. <laughs> Utica, you made it to the top six. You showed everybody your Minnesota pork, your kook, your fashion, your comedy, and most importantly, your heart. You are an incredible talent. I'm so glad I got to meet you, got to know you, got to laugh with you, and got to judge you. So congratulations, baby. Thank you so, so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Michelle. Honestly, icon, legend, star. I hope to have that white streak just like you someday. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hug you in person, honey. I will hold you to that. <laughs> I'm a big hugger, so I will hold you to that too. Okay, with the puns. <laughs> I love you, sis. I love you, Utica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for watching another episode of What You Pack In. See you next time. Bye. Subscribe to the Drag Race YouTube channel for all things Drag Race.